Okay, guys, I'm going to go over really quick what we're going to be covering, um, give you a brief summary. Operation Code 17, it's a unit that was formed a year and a half ago, nearly two years ago, by our ministry. It was a branch off from Veterans on Patrol. We had too much coming across with all the trash. We were getting maps, all these coyote smartphones. We were catching coyotes left and right, and we were getting intelligence extracted from them right away. Um, and, and it was just an overwhelming amount of tangible intelligence. And I'm talking a tsunami that was just waving in on us. So we formed another unit, and it was really through uh, Paul Flores of DSW 74 News um, and uh, M and E. I won't say their names, but they came out to they brought their campers out to my properties down in Arizona, and they camped out instead of going to court site. And they ran operations with us. And we infiltrated the cartel's network through these Coyote smartphones. Now, we were originally using, utilizing these phones to live track the criminals as they were crossing, which is why when you go to our channel, you'll see so many um, videos of us turning in the MS-13, the pedophiles, the drug mules, and sometimes farmers and people that aren't really coming up to hurt anybody. But everyone's crossing illegally. Every one of them's wearing camouflage clothing, except for a few that we got while they were just getting ready to get into a vehicle. So they dumped all their trash in the desert. Um, these phones that we've acquired, we've utilized for multiple purposes. And we have different groups that are running operations through Code 17. Now, the child unit is on tonight. I'll be bringing you the criminal unit later. Right now, this is dealing with the children so we can get people focused on needs. The child unit, what they do, and it's not just through the, the smartphones, that's my job. When they get the intelligence extracted from the children at the border, we have a specific unit that goes through and they look for children first. The first children we're looking for are children without children. Now, in Sassabee, Arizona, we've received thousands of children. And it, it, the sad part is we've had children as young as girls 11 one of them carrying her own child with a swollen belly and the other one with a swollen belly. So we do get children as young as 11 years old that are dumped by the cartel strategically to allow the criminals to advance around on the other open gates. Um, and these operations occur down in Sassabee, Arizona. Now, it is the volunteers work. It is the hard work of those people, no matter who they are. They could have disagreements with us. Most of them have disagreements with me. It's fine. It's, an, it's a matter of my nature. God bless all of you still willing to help these kids. I'm a hard person to get along with, and I apologize for that, but that's just the way I am. Um, we have a job to do. Now, what we've been doing is tracking all the children to where they're going, getting their testimony. And we've actually been able to live track migrants, a daughter that was separated from her mother, um, live track them through WhatsApp where we were watching their live location. We've been in communication with them. Once they cross into the United States of America, our ministry moves in. We provide humanitarian aid and children. Children are automatically provided sanctuary. This is child trafficking. Every child crossing into the United States of America is a victim of child trafficking. They all had to pay in some cases their parents it was all criminal activity the exchange of currency and the moving of children who are unaccompanied our first priority who are these kids coming into the america by thousands and thousands just through arizona alone it's over six hundred and fifty thousand children in the two years that the current regime has been in power and I tell people, when you have over a half a million children that's been dumped into the nation that can't even take care of their own children, still aborts their own children, declares victory while abortions are still occurring, this isn't good for the United States of America, and it's definitely not good for the children. Now, these children are trafficked up to the United States of America through no fault of their own, and they're no part of any political argument. We don't care what your politics are. These are children. We don't care where they come from, we don't care what they look like, we don't care what their language is, we don't care. They're children, and every single one of them is provided sanctuary when they come across, and our volunteers meet them. Any of them that's gotten a Bible that calls that number, that reaches out, we do our best to advocate on their behalf. And you're going to be able to listen to two of our um, team leaders tonight for Unit Code 17 with the child unit. And they'll be able to tell you what they do, 
the calls that they make, uh, they'll be able to provide you some testimony of stories, ways that they've uh, intervened to help, um, and opportunities that you have right now. Uh, I don't want this broadcast ending until we find a solution for a child in Columbus, Ohio. The boy needs a bed. He needs his own bed. He needs his own bed, mattress. He needs his own little bedroom. He might need some good uh, sports equipment or or clothing or shoes, but uh, we want this child to receive what he needs. Definitely needs a bed. Uh, and there are other families, too. We have families that were working with us, uh, acting as whistleblowers, sponsors who weren't even related to children in some cases that were acting as whistleblowers and some of them have deportation i know one has deportation hearings for sure uh set against her and she was the one reporting with two of the children that were being forced vaccinated and they get placed in quarantine uh, you'll get to hear the stories of what's been transpiring on the border as it relates directly to the children and with that, I'm going to bring in Florida unit team leader. I'm going to mute myself. You can unmute yourself. Uh, and I'll jump in and ask questions or something, but you pretty much can just give your uh, testimony. Thank you, Luis. And God bless all the families that are joining today, tonight, this channel. It's tonight in Florida. Um, that was a great opportunity that I found with Veterans Patrol to um, continue the mission of our Lord to protect the children. You know, I was pretty frustrated uh, following during these years, everything that is going on at the border and feeling that I was really far uh, to help them. But then I realized that most of the children from Guatemala, Nicaragua, Cuba, now Peru, those kids are coming and they don't speak English. So I said, well, maybe I could help. I don't know how, but I could help. And it was great to join the Border Wars um, Arizona channel because I've seen that, you know, the Butterfly and most of the volunteers were around the kids, praying with them. And I said, I would love to be there using this technology and try to help to translate because these kids were, they feel the love, but they couldn't communicate. And the best way to know where they are going, who are waiting for them is the communication in the moment that we receive them from crossing the border from these holes. And that's what we do. And, you know, I contact um, Louis, I contact Butterfly, I offer the opportunity to talk from a long distance and translate to these kids something, you know, from Spanish to English to them. Um, and I was really surprised that we can make great changes in their lives. Because when these kids cross the border, they are just going through these migration facilities. In these detention places, they have no communication at the beginning with their sponsors. Sometimes they could be family members friends or people that they don't know, right? We just found out that some kids come with only one phone number and some of these numbers were grown. Some of these numbers are from the countries where they came from, which they don't have anyone else to receive them, to know where are they going? What is the facility? They cross Arizona, from Arizona, but then they are sending to Phoenix, Alabama, New York. What's going on with these kids? If they don't have a real phone number to contact any family member, any friend, they are lost. They are going to be trafficked for sure. So that was a, a, a great opportunity to understand, to clarify numbers, the way that they were uh, speaking. Sometimes, you know, those are poor kids. Those are not kids with money in their countries. They are really poor. They are crossing. Uh, manipulated or not, they are crossing alone. And we could translate for them. And then when they went to the facilities, our role is contact these phone numbers that they gave us. Sometimes our family members, friends, but sometimes there's what? There's like yesterday, a silo number. So those are fake numbers. We follow them and we 
realized in the past weeks that, for example, when they are Cuban boys or girls, children, they release immediately. But the family, especially here in Florida, they had to pay the tickets for them. For the kids from Nicaragua, Guatemala, Salvador, and other countries, the government, through these institutions, they pay the accommodation, the meals during the, you know, the time that they are at these facilities, and the tickets for this uh, reunification with the sponsor. This reunification at the beginning, like two months ago, it was going like in the process, like two weeks, uh, one week, two weeks, but right now it's more than a month. And we have, from our record, more than 200 kids that are still at the facilities. The sponsors are trying to complete all the paperwork, but every week they are changing the rules. At the beginning, it was just proof that you are a family member, that you are going to take care of the kids. Then is the vaccination. 10 vaccines in less than two weeks. Kids are calling the sponsors, crying that they are not feeling okay, that they, their arms are really bad. Uh, if they don't want to take the vaccine, they are sending them to quarantine and they are not allowed to continue the process to um, be reunited with their sponsor. With other cases, we have kids that they were uh, the family members, and most of them are family members, they completed the paperwork. But then they say, okay, um, we need to send a uh, social worker to see if you have the right place to receive the child. If you have the right vehicle to drive them through the school, to drive them through the park, right? And it doesn't make sense from one child, what is the same protocol? What they are using different protocols. We have one situation, two siblings, you know, um, um, the boy is 17, the girl is uh, 12, and they separate in different facilities. When the sponsor was ready to receive, when, when this girl completed the paperwork and everything, because it was a friend of the family who's going to be the sponsor, then they moved the children from Phoenix. The sponsor was in Alabama and then send the children to New York, to the children's village in New York. Why? Because they discovered that the sponsor uh, has a deportation order. And they say, you are not allowed to take the children with you because you have a, an order for the protection. So she was so scared because she felt like she was also in trouble and she didn't know, she was never notified about it because when she arrived to this country, she was a minor. Um, so they tried to find another person. These kids were abandoned by their parents from, from both. Finally, they reached the father. The father was here in Alabama. Now the father is fighting legally, like it's going to be three weeks because as soon as they knew, he knew that the, their kids were, his kids were here, he was completing all the paperwork and claiming so he will be the sponsor. But now the complication is that they are not allowed him because for three years he was absent. He was not a provider for them. And they don't understand the situation in different countries, you know, when parents are separated, when one father has to move to another country just to work and because they are running away from, from the cartels, they don't want to understand. They just say, you were not around your kids in the past three years, you are not allowed to have your kid. As a father, he complained, why did you vaccinate my kids? They get the COVID vaccine in our country and now you're getting again the whole, you know, uh, the, the two doses plus the booster plus other vaccines. My child, 17 year old boy, he's feeling frustrated. He's very depressed. At least put them together in one of these apartments at the children village in New York. Case manager said, mm -mm, that's not possible. I said, why? Why my daughter, 12 years old, should be around in a small apartment with people that she doesn't know when she has her own brother in a different apartment? They don't care. So in our last communication, uh, um, 
he's going to push more with the case manager and he's waiting that the last paperwork that they are asking is like uh, something will happen. And the case manager said, maybe by the end of May, we might have good news for you. But if not, your kids will be sent to, you know, uh, a different place uh, to be uh, declared like orphans. And he is really sad about it. So he's trying to find proof in Guatemala, you know, that he was the father, that he always cared about them before he left the country. But things like this are happening. Kids that uh, got vaccinated and then we seen from the videos that they crossed the border in a very good health condition. And when they arrived to the sponsors, one of them had a broken arm and the sponsor was never notified that this kid had an accident in the, at the facility. Another kid that has problem right has problems right now, breathing problems after the vaccination, at these ten vaccinate ten vaccines that he received. So those are the cases that we need. We we can uh, contribute to solve, trying to guide these these people, the sponsors, because some of the sponsors also don't talk, don't speak in English. So they don't understand all the paper that they, they have to complete. So we explain to them, well, this is the best way to do to do the thing. This documentation that they are requiring from you represent this, this, this is important. Trying to help them to complete this paperwork, like another case manager, but with more compassion about it. Trying to help them to feel like they are not alone in this process to be reunited with their, with the kids. Um, and also trying to help the ones that were deported, like the case of Brenda Mendoza and her kids and husband, they were deported. She is a cancer uh, patient. And besides this, the, the, the facility decided that she cannot prove that she was running away from the Mara Saratusha cartel in Guatemala. So they yeah, can you... All right. Now, this is a case dealing with um, uh, where we document it and they've actually been sent back over to the other side. Uh, but in this case, it was unique. They didn't end up in the hands of the cartel. Um, but can you can you go through when you talk about this case, about the testimony, about the area, the articles about their home, you know, the, this and, and, you know, a teacher and a transportation driver. And, you know, I would have came up with my daughter, too. So, uh, but go ahead. Yes, yes. Brenda is a teacher in Guatemala. And the husband is a driver transportation, uh, uh, you know, public driver transportation, uh, a transportation driver. Uh, but they live in Zone 6. Zone 6 is control for Mara Saratusha. And this situation is from years. So... If you Google it in the news, you will find that Zone 6 in Guatemala, it's a red zone. They try to kidnap their daughter. Uh, they chased the daughter when she was leaving from a school, and they tried to uh, kidnap also the, the boy, uh, her little boy, uh, just to join the... Because it's what they did. They kidnapped the kids, and the boys are taken as their part of the gang and the girls uh they sex traffic the girls they try and you know they rate them and it's like they love to have like different women it's the way that the cartels work so when she knew that this situation happened to their kids leaving the school those parents didn't think twice this what would be the, the the best situation for them and they decided to run away if not, they will kill them. And that's what it's doing. And they, the same week when they leave, they left Guatemala, they kill other kids that they were in the same situation. And it's in the news. They run away without documentation, no passports. They just took the decision. Probably we will have the same situation if we, we are facing something like this. Uh, and they just move and someone told them, you have to go from this area and just go to the border. They have a, a, um, a family member here in Houston, uh, I'm sorry, in Atlanta. So that's the first thing that they thought. 
and they came here. They explained everything to the facility and they say, okay, but you don't have this proof. Okay, but you don't have this. So instead of helping them because they were really uh, looking for asylum, they complicate everything and they just deport to Mexico. Now they have all the documentation with them. They have also the medical proof that she is a cancer patient. Um, they have all the proof from the neighbors that they had to leave the school, they had the kids had to leave the school, they had to leave their house alone in this place. They don't have money. And uh, we found for them a refugee camp nearby the by the Mariposa port. Um, and the good thing is that they explain, which is something that now we know, that in this area this is an specific like avenue that divided this 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 place through the west is controlled by the cartels through the east of the avenue is where you can walk so they explain to them where to go and this is some information that we could do also through the people in case they are deported um we also uh, have contact with this organization kino uh, facility so they offer 15 days um accommodation for the family meals and legal advice uh, how to prepare their documentation, the process for everything, right? So this is what I'm so I'm sorry, please. Um I have a little boy that is doing something that is not okay here. I think you might have muted yourself. Hold on. Because I can't hear you now. You might have muted yourself. Now I'm trying to find you. Can't hear you. Something went wrong. There you are. Okay. Okay, okay. No, no, no. I think that something was another call. Okay, so me. dealing with this Guatemalan okay. family, yes, and, and and this was um a case okay. where you had so an actually right legitimate now, okay, complaint. absolutely they are legit uh and they are good people that they are just just trying to protect their children and unfortunately um you know the the, the situation with with them and their kids are not the best so they had to rent, they had to rent another place in mexico to survive and wait until they complete all the paperwork and wait for in the waiting list when these uh uh, attorneys or legal advisors will help them to introduce the paperwork again at the border. But this is, you know, and, and we are always contacting them and telling them, uh, trying to get the support, you know, because these people need support. Can you, you know? clarify when we talk with them, when they get sent back to the other side, can you clarify our policy as it relates to assisting them and violating the law and crossing back into America? Specifically, in, in which if point? they ask us for help to like cross, because I know Betsy's going to be on, so I know she's going to be explaining. Um, if they ask, like, we can't, I don't know if you've been asked this, I know she has, but we've had some that were put back in the hands of the cartel, they were in hotels in Nogales, and you know, yes. we always reiterate we can't help them cross into America, but we can try to find them a safe place over there and try to case manage. And even if it's one less uh, uh, victim being denied assistance or one less criminal being denied access, it's the work that we do is what makes a difference one at a time. But go ahead. Yes, yes. Well, the situation is that um, as soon as all these people are um, deported uh, at this place, uh, of course, uh, this, nobody has enough money to wait in a country that is not yours. So some of these people want to try again and cross again. What they don't know is that everything around Nogales is running by the cartel. So this place, Kino facility, is like, like, an, like a, a small paradise in the place. Because if they cross one block away, they, uh, 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 that's what Brenda told me. We, we, we could see from here, from the facility, when they are chasing uh, 
other immigrants that are running, you know, with their backpacks and they are chasing with, with the gangs, trying to assault them, kidnapping in the middle of the road. So it's not possible. We cannot guide them also to say, okay, try again, because it's not safe. But kids are doing this alone. Kids are doing this alone. And this is really sad because we know what they are facing in the middle of the way and we can't do anything. So we need support. We need more Hispanic people. You know, it's not about just saying, oh, the wall and stuff like that. No, no, no. We need to take action. We need to help. And if you know Spanish, this is the best time to give them the orientation that this is crossing from the border is not safe. That is better to stay in these facilities, organize their paperwork, and go directly to the go directly to the courts, and offer to them, you know, and and, and uh, file their asylum case with them. So. And what you're talking the, about, yeah, what what you're talking about is to secure the gate. So there's three aspects that we told people when we set out four years ago: build the wall. Okay, build the wall. You have to man the wall. A wall without staffing doesn't do anything. I've seen these guys climb up the new wall. Some of them can't get over that six foot anti climbing panel that was designed by agents. Um, but you know, but you also need to fix the gates. You need to fix the gates where you can have safe commerce, where you can have safe um, access to and from where innocent people, if they are fleeing, We've had American patriots that had to flee the United States of America. Edward Snowden, Julian Assange. You had people that they stand against the government and the corruption and the globalists, and they can't stay in our country anymore. So they had to flee. They literally had to flee. So you had that same thing in a scenario happen in other countries. And fixing the gate is is really important part of our entire platform. Because we want to make sure that none of the criminals who are going to hurt America and make every person crossing the border look like they're crazy, illegal rapists. That's not true. You know, there is a great amount that are coming across because they emptied the prisons. That is true. And that is here. Unfortunately, we can't stop the bad guys in camo. We can't get enough people out there. But we're doing what we can. And we praise God for everything that he's allowed us to do. Um, yeah, now, dealing yeah, with yeah. Anthony, if you can, I want to jump on Anthony. Um, I know he's touched down in Columbus, Ohio. I believe this is going to be coming from maybe it's uh, Adams Group or uh, Brett. I'm not sure, or it could be. I'm not sure what uh, which team was down there. But go ahead and touch base on Anthony and and his testimony and um, what 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 they need, the ant and everybody. Yeah, Anthony spent like a month at this facility. Her aunt is the sponsor. And unfortunately, during this process, when she knew that finally she will cross alone, her husband got an accident. So now she is the supporter of her family. And she was trying to organize her life because she has two little kids. And she really want to bring something different through her uh, nephew. So um, finally, after she was pushing a lot with the case manager, Anthony was released. Um, she drove like three hours to pick him up because the, the case manager called her like at 6 a.m. and say, travel because in four hours, your nephew is arriving to uh, through the place, uh, to the airport. So she received him with love. She, we talked to Anthony. Anthony was, you know, she, she was scared. Those kids are scared when they are at the facility because they don't understand and they don't, they, they don't, they don't understand what they are treating in the way that they are treat, being treated. And, and, and he's happy. But, you know, as, as a mother, that the, the aunt, she said, my, 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 my nephew deserves to have a place to sleep. You know, right now, my two kids are sleeping in one bed. And we are just providing this uh, a small place for Anthony. And, and it's not fair for my other boy. So, but they understand that they are supporting the family, but she was trying to find something. And finally what she got is moving to a new apartment with the rest of the money that she got uh, before the husband had the accident. So she rent a new apartment, a little bigger. They are poor people. 
right? They are not people that are, they, they live here, but they are just trying to survive, you know, because everybody right now had a problem with the gas, uh, with the rental, so it's, it's everywhere. And, but she found another place just to offer one room for her nephew. It means love, right? But now she feels frustrated because she said, now I have to just um, move a little, you know, the mattress to help him to sleep. And that's not fair because he was spending one month at this facility. So she's her broke and she said, you know, uh, we are happy because we are together, but I would love to give him something else to my, to my nephew. So she's just asking a bed, a mattress, some clothing, something to help her because she said, what is coming to me is not going to be easy because I have to wait until my husband recovers. And it's important. It's important to um, remind people that are listening. If you didn't know, now you do. A lot of these children are going to places and they're already in extreme poverty. And some of these people aren't prepared to take these children, but no one else is stepping up to take these children. And we don't want children sitting in immigration facilities where there are rapes, where there is abuse, where they're getting mass injected. We want to get them out as quick as possible. Um, so, uh, there, there are kids that are touching down. Um, and I'd say that this is not a one-time occurrence. There's another case in North Carolina where our team went over and accidentally went to the wrong apartment looking for two migrant children where they found two migrant children, you know, here illegally, go figure just one floor down. And they actually went and got food. They had no food in the fridge and they went and spent like $80 to get food for the kids, to get the stuff. They got them Spanish Bibles, and then they realized they were at the wrong apartment. The two kids that were vaccinated 10 times was one floor up. So now we got to do another wellness check. So some of these families that we go check up on, these kids that you see in these videos, some of these kids, they don't have a lot. And, and, I, don't, I, and, and I don't see any reason why not to provide everyone the opportunity to bless a child who's just gone through an experience through no fault of their own. They're kids, and this is where we find our own humanity and morality. When we draw a line in the sand and say, we will stop right here. You're not going to demonize these kids, politicize these kids, utilize these kids for anything. These are God's children. And um, so if there's people in uh, Columbus, Ohio, if there's someone that would like to sponsor a bed, um, I don't know if we can get it shipped or delivered or if they have the capability. We do have a ministry member that has already offered, but I instructed her I would put it out there and allow someone else, if they're willing to help um, this aunt and help this boy, um, we'd, be, we'd be grateful. You, um, you could do the um, uh, three-way conference so that you can translate for them and we can even add them to WhatsApp so they can communicate and, you know, so they can be there for the family. But um, uh, these are children and we don't forsake these children after we turn them over to Border Patrol. Once it's proven that they've been recycled, once it's proven that they've been abused, once it's proven that they've been deviated from their path. And that's Lizeth. And that's the next case. So you guys remember Anthony, if you can help him, please get a hold of us. Info.vop at protonmail.com. Just put Anthony in the subject. We like to get him some beds, some clothing, um, I, you know, uh, and we'll we'll figure out. You'll find some other things. But can you go? Um, were you able to get an update, a hold of Lizeth? Um, they didn't respond. Uh, we talked they haven't about responded? Lizeth. Okay. Yeah, but the new case from the boy, they didn't answer the phone yet. Yeah. You know, we have to continue, you know, persisting with the situation. Sometimes they don't answer because they don't know your phone number. Sometimes the sponsors are scared because they feel like, you know, the situation from the sponsors sometimes is the same. They are not legally, completely legally here. They are in the process. So sometimes they feel like the, 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 the government is calling them. So we have to be very uh, compassionate to explain to them that our mission is about the children. This is a, mi a mission that is from God. We are not related to any political agenda. We are not related to any other agenda that is God's agenda. That's the only thing that we care. We are taking care of the children and if we are going to help and give the guidance to these sponsors that really care about the children, of course, they need to feel that our country is a country also with great people, the people that to really take care 
of the children. That's the best example to let them know. It's not only the place where you could come, make money, and you know, send the money to your country. No, no, no. This is a place, this is a country where the people that really care about the community. So this is the best example. And I feel like, you know, most of the Hispanic people that might be here, or if you have friends that speak Spanish, this is the best way to help them. Because these Can you give a general idea of like when you contact them um, and, and what your process is, what you go through and um, certain things that stood out to you during this? I explained to them exactly because imagine that the first week when the kids are crossing, the sponsors don't know anything about it. They don't know what's going on with them until they receive the communication from this detention facility. So during this week, these people are like, okay, what's, what happened? They could be, you know, as you said, recycling through the, and they know what are the risks from these kids. So during this week, we contact them and we say, uh, we have a nice video and this boy or this girl share with us your phone number just in case something happened. So right now we are with you, we are praying with you uh, and let's wait until you receive the call, right? So they feel like they are not alone in the waiting process. As soon as they get the call, they contact us. They send by, by text message or by WhatsApp. Uh, I received the call. He is okay. He is on Phoenix. He is in text. They explain the information. And this is when we continue. Okay. So for sure, they are going to ask this, you know, uh, how to prove your your the place where you live the connection that you have with the child so be prepared with all this documentation and they say yes uh this case manager already is in contact with me and they send all the paperwork by whatsapp and that's the way that they are doing right now so everything is being solved by whatsapp and then is when you know the process starts and sometimes the kids are allowed to call immediately to the sponsor which is something great because then they call you back and they say hey i talked to my uh, my, my my friend, my 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 nephew, my niece, uh, my brother, my sister, uh, and they are happy. But we have this good side when you know that the sponsor is someone that is is legit. But then we have other phone numbers that you call, and they say, "Oh, I'm not aware about it. I don't know what you are talking about. I don't know anybody with this name." I had a situation that I, I said, okay, uh, you know, I, I'm working in a restaurant. This is a restaurant. Please don't call me back. But then he called me back. <laughs> and then he said, I'm sorry, I can't respond because, yeah, this is a family member and I can answer. I, I made a mistake. I made this phone call. I, 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 I gave this phone number and I was not allowed to use the, my job. So they explained to you right but again there are others like silo you know this place that so how this child had the, the the phone number the central number the, the number from silo i don't know what would be the future about these children when they don't have a real number and and they share with us sometimes they tell you sometimes yeah they could be confused with the numbers yeah. but most of them are showing showing in video this is the number that I have. I have to contact my sponsor. And that's what we're doing, right? And trying to... Think. So the next level that Louis suggests, but, you know, we, we could spend the whole day talking, 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 but we need help. The next step will be trying to save these numbers in WhatsApp and see if we... Because some numbers are from Guatemala, or from Nicaragua, and try to see, hey, your child gave us this number. Are you the parent? Are you a family member? What do you know from this child? Because when you ask them, what is your phone number? They give you the number from their countries, right? So if they are crossing just with this number, what are they going to do here? Who's going to ask for them? If, that is, if this is a problem for us, it will be also the problem for the detention facility because this is the number that they have. Are they going to be recycled? Are they going to send back to the border? What are they going to do with these kids? That they don't have a real uh, number to be in contact, a real sponsor here. This is our concern because probably we have 50% of the kids that are crossing with this problem. So 
if we could have more help at the border will be awesome because we can talk to them in person in spanish and say hey okay but this number is from guatemala from nicaragua you know because when you are there you just uh, having you just gather the information from them but you cannot question again right because you don't know it, it's every year the language is it's extremely important right now so yeah we need more help to create more strategies around the moment when they are crossing when they are waiting at these detention facilities when they are moving uh with the sponsors when they need some help right now these kids are coming and you know the school year it's gonna start soon because this break the summer break is just not like a big break you know for, for especially when you have a new kid in your house you have to contact the school you have to provide the school supplies sometimes uniforms and sometimes if, you know i have a brother that is in in, in florida he was always single and he said i don't know what i'm gonna do with my brother he said well we are gonna help you what is your address and from your address we contact the school board you know we, we try to guide them how to they could provide the best um days from these kids here and try to engage in the community and we try to find the church that is closer to the area where they live so they can go and say you know give thanks to god because right now they are together because everything is is for in the name of god and this is what we do and we feel blessed that we can do this if we could change one children's life you know it's, it's important every child is important thank you so much betsy you want to jump on i see that you've been on a while you can unmute yourself if you want she's been listening a while too there you are okay hello everybody hello <laughs> Can you uh, just give from your uh, viewpoint and some of the cases you worked on some stuff to stand out with you and ways that people could help, please? Can you can you tell me again? I couldn't hear you. Uh, can you can just go through and give some of the testimony of some of the volunteer work you've done, uh, the cases and uh, families and the stuff that you've seen um, through through the work you've done and ways that people can help. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I want to share that uh, to understand this job, you know, this work, uh, I have to. I had to go there, you know, down there to the border, because it's never going to be the same when you hear that when somebody tells you, than when you are, you know, uh, when you leave the moment, when you are there, when you have contact with these people, with the kids, with the mother carrying the babies, you know, and and for me it was 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 everything you know to to understand what's going on right now on the border and what's happening uh, with with the kids and uh well the, in my experience there was um i think was uh, 60 people crossing the border the border at the night completely dark anyone have a like you know like a light or something and then uh we we met them and they were very scared very very scared um uh probably i think uh somebody on the other side tell you know told them something like hey if you see somebody just run or whatever because they they at the moment they they saw us they start running and we we were very concerned because we knew that oh like it hey you didn't have to run stop so we tried to to, to to you know we have to run with them my daughter was with me my husband and uh, another friend and my daughter she was running with me you know and and tr i'm trying to talk with this hey, you don't have to run don't run you are okay you know we are part of the the church we're missionaries we're here to help you uh to give you some water some food because we know you uh you're coming from a very very hard travel and so they but they didn't want to listen because they were you, you could see their faces 
you could see fear on them. And that's uh, something that I never seen before. I never seen that before. And one of the, th and, and then the, um, some people, they just run. They don't, they, they, they didn't want to stop, you know, and at the end was two, two women. Uh, one is uh, 20 years old and the other was 19 with, with two babies. They were carrying the babies on their arms, but they were so tired that one of the ladies was carrying the baby only with, you know, uh, like uh, trying to keep the baby, but she was always, you know, um, dropping the baby because she couldn't anymore. And with them was another, like a five young guys in the moment. I didn't know what age they were. And they start telling me like it's they are they 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 are scared because somebody tried to take their babies, so they don't want nobody around them. And I say, okay, I I understand. And I talk with this woman. I say, I understand that you are scared, and it's okay to be scared, but we are not here to take your babies. And we need to explain them that they need to keep their babies all the time with them, you know, in their arms, nothing like, hey, can you carry my baby for a little bit or, or whatever? Because we knew, because you explain us that sometimes it's bad people over there, you know, trying to kidnap, kidnap kids. And, uh, so we explained them that then they, uh, they start listening to us and they stop. And finally, they, you know, they just uh, sit down there and say, okay, we can't more. We can't anymore. So they just start like a crying and, and they ask me, um, is this the, is this is U.S.? So they didn't know where they were. Even when they across the border, you know, because it's the wall and it's many holes in, in that part of uh, Sasebe, um, they didn't know if they were in the U.S. side. They thought they still in Mexico. So they were super confused, very, very confused, very scared. After that, we start talking with them. We gave them, yeah, we gave them some snacks. We gave them water and we start talking about other things to try to make them feel comfortable and safe and uh, and yes it's it's uh, uh, speaking spanish is a tool of course because you you it's not the same when my husband tries to, and the other the the other person was with us trying to talk with them they couldn't understand and they they felt afraid because they didn't know what there was they what they were talking then when they knew that my daughter and I, we told them we are from Mexico, you know, um, it's okay. I told them where you're from. One, some, some were coming from El Salvador, uh, Honduras, and another from Nicaragua. And when I asked them age, uh, the other kids, they have some, some, they were between 14 and 17. And, uh, they look, they look young, but, uh, at the same time, it's, it's different. You know, the culture over there, it's very, very different here for us. 18, it's, it's, uh, it's when they start, you know, growing or, or, uh, you, you, you know, but over there, they, they live so, so much. They have so much on their lives that you, they they are sixteen or seventeen, but it's like they are thirty. You know the, the the way they are, the way they act, the way they think. It's totally totally different. You are not talking with kids. We're talking with adults almost, but they're still kids. You know they're still being um, teenagers uh, or. So that was the experience. Uh, thanks God they listened to us. Then um, we. Um, we try to you to to you know keep their their names uh number phone numbers uh address and from where they come and cell phone or 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 numbers where their parents in you know in their countries we we try to get the most information we can uh everything 
everything because it's very important it's very important uh because when if we want to if we really want to help them we need to know many things about them and uh, maybe some things that is they, they are not important for us they can be important for them and and, and i think we need to we, we need to think like them and it's hard when you never been in that situation um my, I, I, when I was living in Mexico, uh, I worked for many years in the government and, um, I had to go to these, uh, little towns where it's a very, you know, poor people in very bad conditions. And many of these people, they were trying to come to the U.S. And when you see the situation and how they live, you understand when they're trying to leave their places. And uh, we know Honduras, Nicaragua, Salvador, it's a lot of crime. It's a lot of, uh, they're trying, I have friends in El Salvador and they, they left the country because they're trying to take their kids to, to join this, uh, Sara Mara Salvatrucha. So they, it's, for, for, for them it was good that they have family in Mexico, but not all the people have, you know, the same uh fortunately so that that was one of the the experience and was very hard for me i have to tell that after that i cried because really touched my heart and and the last you know when they were at, at the end the border patrol came and you know he he took all these people and these people, they didn't know who, who who was this border patrol. They didn't know. They they have no idea. So I have to explain them in the moment. Hey, don't worry. You're gonna be okay. You know, they're 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 the border patrol. They're gonna take you to a place where they're gonna ask you the same questions. Almost, I ask your name, your address, your phone. Make sure you're giving them the the exactly information because it's gonna be good for you if this is only for you good so they need to know you are there for help them then i i i ask them if i could pray with them because i i i um explain them that we are missionaries trying to help them and guide them and uh and they accept they they, they pray and uh and some of them they they cry and and they say we are uh, I'm very very happy to know that you are here because we were very scared in the beginning we thought you were you are somebody who wants to take the babies and we is why we run but then when you start talking with us and running with us and and making us laugh and trying to be nice so we we knew that you were you are a good person and I said well I'm not a good person but I'm tr I'm we're trying to to help you guys. So be be okay. So I think that's the best part. You know, when you are down there, you have to make them feel you care. You know, you know, like you really care about the feelings, about what they're, you know, happen with them. Uh, sometimes it's hard to make some kind of questions like a. a somebody abuse of you, somebody uh, try to kidnap you or whatever, but you have to make those questions because they are important. You know, don't, don't think like, no, I don't want to do that, those questions because maybe they're going to feel offended. No, no, no. Do you don't, you don't think like that because it's very important to know who, which of the kids were abused in the way, because they're coming from, from you know from countries on the south and they have to cross you know many countries and then mexico where it's cartels where it's you know people trying to take advantage of them you know when it's a lot of um in mexico if you're a woman you are not safe so they're, they're having all that kind of things. We need to know what's really happened because if they're coming to this country thinking or believing because they really believe that they're going to have a better life, they have these hopes, you know, and they really believe. And, and then, you know, in the accommodation, 
it's uh, the result, it's at the end, they're going to be in a very bad situation too. And probably even worse because they don't speak English. They can't communicate. So many of these kids could be in a danger because they don't know how to explain what's going on with them. And because probably they are afraid because, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. They come from a lot of things, from a lot of things. And another thing, um, um, following some of the numbers that you sometimes give me to to call the families uh, to know uh, about the process of the, the kids. Uh, well, what I do is um, I, call the, I call the sponsor. I call the sponsor because the kids gave this number. So I call the sponsor and I ask, hey, hello. You know, I try to be nice. I don't, I don't call in it. Uh, uh, are you this, this, this and that? Uh, can you give me a confirm if this is your family? No, because nobody likes that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I, I I don't like when somebody call me. I don't say hello. <laughs> hey, come on. So we need to we need to be nice with these people because they are a different culture. This is a very 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 different culture. Here in 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 the states, I know when somebody goes to your house and sometimes don't say hello, you don't feel offended because it's part of the culture. But in this you know, South, they like to be treated like that, like, hey, hello, good afternoon, how are you? How how was your day? You know, that kind of things to open the window to f make them feel comfortable. And then you come with the questions. Um, hey, uh, your, your, I have a fam, a, one of your family. I don't know if it's your daughter, your niece, uh, but it's her name is this. And uh, she gave me your number. So I'm trying to know if I'm calling to the correct person, you know, and then, oh, yes, uh, she's my, she's my daughter. And it was, uh, remember this lady, this Hannah, Hannah Lily, Hannah Lee? remember? Yes. So she and, and Yali. So she is 15 years old. She across the border by herself. And um, we, she gave us different numbers. And the beginning was very hard because they wrote the numbers like the one and wasn't one. They put the one for for us was a one, but was a seven. <laughs> so we could we tried different ways to call. And we never like, and then I said, maybe it's not the one, maybe it's seven. So we tried, you know, uh, with the number seven and then the, the call th comes through and then I could call and was a man responding the phone. And then, you know, when he, when I, 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 when I felt that he was comfortable with me on the call, uh, I asked the question, oh, because why? Because they are scared, you know, they know they are giving money to the cartel to to um help their kids across the border that's something that's illegal okay illegal that's illegal illegal because they're crossing in a legally way and because they're doing something bad b making business with the cartel and you never know how these people are going to act react or said or whatever so so the people waiting, their family, the ones that are here, you know, waiting for the call, they're nervous. They are, uh, they're worried. They don't feel safe. So it's why sometimes they don't want to give you information. Or it's why sometimes they feel like, no, I don't know you. And, and they hang you the phone or, or they sometimes that you feel the rude. But we need to be patient because the, the important thing is not them. The important is the kids. You know, try to, to, to get the kids in the, in the, in, in the best, um, home they can, they can have. Because sometimes the sponsors are not the best. And, and we need to know these things. So after I called the, this, um, this person, um, then he, he was nice and he said, oh, thank you for call. Yes, my daughter, I know she crossed. 
but she doesn't have a phone, so I don't know anything about her. I only know about her because um, somebody called me from a missionaries and tell me that my daughter, they, they, found, they found my daughter and she's going to be with the immigration. And that was the only thing he knew. And when I asked him, and your daughter doesn't have a phone, he said, no, she doesn't have a phone. Okay. So the only thing I could say is like, don't worry. If your daughter is with the, the, uh, it's with the immigration and it's a process. And sometimes the process takes, you know, and sometimes the process takes time, you know, not because your daughter crossed yesterday, she's going to be today with you. That's not the real. So they say, oh, okay, okay, I didn't know. I don't know the process. And uh, you have to know and you have to explain them. And we need to read, you know, we need to know what the process is because we can explain them better and make them feel relief because it's what they need. And um, then he, he, he was like, okay. And I said, well, we're going to wait until they're going to call you. And when they call you, please call me back. Or, um, you know, call to the person who, who gave you my number. I don't know. And he said, oh, okay, yes. Then uh, I think he called you again saying um, that somebody yeah, was asking. Again. Yeah. He called you again. Because somebody called him, called the father, asking for money. And when he asked why you want money, he said, oh, because we need to buy the ticket flight for your daughter so then she can be with you. Obviously, we know that never going to happen with immigration and in the process because it's not the way it is. So it's when uh, we knew something was very, very uh, suspicious and uh, we, I, we told him, and I told him, okay, don't send any money. Who asked you for money? Uh, well, he, he doesn't give me the, na the name. He just said, he just gave me an account and, and the number and this and that, how we can send. And I said, you're going to send money to you don't know who? You, you can't do that, right? Because could be another person asking you for money. And she said, yes, I was thinking about that. And I said, don't send the money because immigration never asks for money. They're never going to do that. It's a lot of people trying to take advantage of this. And then. I want to um, interject really quick with that, too. When he called, remember, you had him send me a screenshot, a text message of the people, the phone number, the people who called. And I called that number myself. And it was Spanish speaking person who understood English. But as soon as I started my line of questioning, I got hung up on and then I was blocked. Um, so this was definitely an outside source that had contacted the father and they knew that his daughter was in immigration somewhere. And we don't know how many other families have been built on this scheme, but we were able to intervene on this one child. Um, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, uh, he, under he understood what we, we trying to said and he said, okay, I'm not going to send any money. And, and I told, um, so he gave me the number from, the person who was asking for, for money. And what I did is, uh, go through my WhatsApp because I know all these people only use WhatsApp to communicate. So that's another thing you have to do. Download the WhatsApp and before, you know, add the, the person you're going to call your phone. And before you make a call, try to go to the profile and they always have a picture or a name or something saying there. So that's good because you, you at least you're gonna have a picture of the person you are talking with. And and you can give you an idea, definitely an idea who who who, who kind of person could be. So when when he gave me the the the, the number of the person who was asking for money, I did that. I went to the WhatsApp and I saw the picture. He has a picture of himself, and I said, like, okay. And that's the picture I sent you. And well, 
After that, he, I told him, okay, block the number. Don't receive any more call from this number because we know they're trying to scam you. Just block them. Don't, don't believe them. It's not good. He did. He blocked the number. And then I think two days before that, he called us back saying that, uh, his daughter communicated with him and first he had the call from immigration it was a lady asking him some question and then i told him hey and after you talk with this lady they let you talk with your daughter and he said yes i say, okay we are fine here we need to make sure all the time there are they they have the ability to communicate with their kids because it's a scam everywhere. Just like they try to ask for money for him, can another person can do the same and uh, using a different way to do it. So it's why we need to always tag with these people and let them know the process of immigration and that they always going to have a call to their kids always because they are, uh, you know, their kids, they, they, they have to talk with, with some of the sponsors. So thanks God, uh, everything went through good, very good. And at the end, you sent me the picture of him with his daughter and, and the son and with the Bible in the hand. So that was very, very beautiful. <laughs> and that was, that was unique. Cause I, I mentioned earlier before we started recording, but she was, uh, um, uh, I don't remember if it was Shannon or who, whoever it was, was down there, but, uh, Maybe it was Firefly, uh, not Butterfly, Firefly, Lisa. Um, but she refused the Bible three times. Yeah. But she, you know, she allowed our volunteer to give her a hug, snacks, water. She took the humanitarian aid, but she wouldn't touch the Bible. But it was really great. And that's also for um, for those of you, that's one way you can help. You can sponsor these children. Um, we like to get them. There's a specific Bible company, and they've been really, really gracious Uh with us and I'm really grateful for them. Um, but you can order through them and they'll custom engrave the child's name on the Bibles. In Liza's case, her brother and her uh, father was there. So we got Bibles for all three of them. One of our um, just wonderful angel donors. We've got so many, God bless you guys. Thank you. Um, if yeah, you can do that, uh, it's important. And these Bibles have Spanish on one side, English on the other. So it helps helps create, uh, you know, um, an opportunity for them to learn English so they can communicate. Um, and and uh, remember that uh, these are kids. Uh, these are kids. And, and um, uh, there was one more thing with the case, uh, Betsy, that I, I was uh, wanting to go over with you. With the, You remember the father and the son? Um, they got thrown back in to uh, – was that – were you on that case where they got thrown back into a hotel? And then a mother and a child came into the room or something. They were getting ready to cross over. No. Okay. That's someone else. But yeah. we've had cases with dealing with the recycled ones. Um, uh, Luisa was just explaining earlier about the Guatemalan family. So right now they're in uh, an apartment. They're covered through the month. Um, people stepped up to help. Thank you, everyone who uh, helped us help them. Uh, you know, um, and, uh, and then with this family, I'm sorry to, for interrupting. With because I'm in the WhatsApp in the same um, chat with them, yeah. and I'm I've been trying to find help for work for them, but it's 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 very very hard. It's very difficult because they don't have anything like a no evidence of who they are, and uh, the situation in Mexico it's 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 difficult even for Mexicans. <laughs> so the, the priority for the, of the jobs they are given to Mexicans and not for these people. And, um, but well, I'm, I'm trying and I'm going to be just, you know, trying and trying until something comes through. I'm praying and I know God is gonna, you know, mm -hmm. is going to help in his times. He has his times. He knows when. And, um, yes, so I think that's very important for all of us uh, here in this uh, part of the border wars. Uh, pray, be communicate with God and ask him for wisdom because um, 
if we are here is for a reason. I believe that. I believe that we are here for a, for a good reason. And if God is using us, well, we need to always keep that touch with God, you know, praying and studying the Bible. And, and, and because when these people, you know, cross the border, some of them probably they don't know God. Or oh, they have uh, the most of them probably they're Catholic because, um, you know, that part of Mexico and South America, they are very Catholic. And, um, but the important is whoever wants to go there to the border and help always remind them that it's, it's God exists and he loves them. And no matter how bad was, you know, the, the path, but, because if they are here, it's because that God protect them. We need, always need to make sure they know we are there because God want, want us there. And uh, what Amen. what other thing I'm going to share? I think that's it. <laughs> well, I, yeah. Well, thanks God, all the numbers that I've been, you know, in touch. They are good. Everything is everybody's fine. They with with sponsors, with brother or or father or the uncle, and they're they're okay. You you know when when I talk with them, they sound good. 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 And thank you for everything you do, too. We really appreciate it. Um, and she covered earlier that we need people that are Spanish speaking, Hispanics, more Hispanics. Um, we want more Hispanics, believers to step up to help with the language barrier um, to call. You've just listened to two different testimonies of different types of calls and how they each approach the situation. They each got their unique approach, but yet you can see they both have the same fruits. Um they stay in contact with the children. Uh, we get together the resources as we need to help people. Um, they don't stop looking for resources or stop trying to help. Uh, so we're really grateful for for those that do volunteer on the Code 17 team. But we could use more. Um, we need more for the criminal unit, but we really need the most people possible for the child unit. We have it broken up in the telegram in the three regions, and we've been running a test run this week where we're just giving a few kids to see, okay, I mean, we got uh, on average, there's two dozen people in each region. Okay, of the two dozen, you're going to have six to eight of us that are like part of the ministry, part of the operations already involved. We're looking for other people who are going to step up and just take initiative. We want to see someone grabbing a child from a video and taking a screenshot and saying, OK, what's this child's name? If it's not said, we'll look it up and try to get to you. I'm going to advocate. I want to find this child. We have a lot of these children that we haven't found yet, and we need people that will help find them because they all haven't gone into good places. As as we stated, um, we will we will never discuss anything dealing with extractions. Um, I will just tell you people that, that those things take place, and it's really just between um, those people involved with it to deal with that. Any child that we find that's in a situation where he or she is a violent situation, a pedophile, a gangbanger, an unsafe condition, we just we, we get the child someplace safe. And we want more people that are able to open up to their homes to these children. And I don't know what the end game is result. The only thing I know is we're not going to leave them in the hands of the criminals that are using them as shields. And um, we're going to get them to someplace safe where they can hit their knees and pray to Jesus and be loved and protected and sheltered while God works on whatever he needs to work on. If he uses us, he uses us. Um, you know, um, sometimes we're not the best ones to use. You guys have seen that uh, pretty hard line with some of my approaches, uh, which I won't apologize for. But people that are in those regional groups, you have to just take action. We're looking for those who are going to take initiative. We need people who are going to step up outside of their comfort zone because you have to be deprogrammed from fighting and attacking every problem the way you think it should be attacked and start doing something new and different, which means getting outside of the box that you find yourself most productive and comfortable in and trying new horizons, going and trying new approaches. Um, for anyone who says they're a Christian, we should never have a problem knocking on the door and asking somebody if they know Jesus Christ and they know that God loves them. 
I mean, so you really shouldn't have a problem doing that. Morals do it. Jehovah Witnesses do it. Everyone else runs out with no problems, so, you know. So we should have no problem um, uh, contacting migrant families and children that we were there to give Bibles to, that we were there to pray with, that we were there to minister to, and that we promised if they ever needed us to call us. Now, we don't make empty promises. So this is the work that you guys don't get to see that's been taking place. Uh, and, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. What we have in these phones, for example, some of the stuff that we've done utilizing their own smartphones, the networks were embedded in. We could never be taken out. It's just insane the amount of accounts that's been compromised, Gmail accounts, phone numbers, American businesses hiring them. Um, the people that were sending them their where they get their mail in voting ballots, everything going all the way back. These phones have been providing us a plethora amount of intelligence and that tell intelligence is tangible. We can take that intel and apply it and whether we're getting inside their social media and busting them up and obstructing them and adding confusion and taunting them or trolling them. There's a whole lot of you that don't like me. You may see this video one day. Why don't you help me? You don't like me so much. I can give you accounts of people. You're very good at trolling. You got a talent. You can troll like no tomorrow and believe the very lies that you spread on our channels and go out and spew all the time. Why don't we utilize some of that negative negativity that you're using directed at me and why don't we apply it to the child traffickers at the other side because i have hundreds and hundreds of accounts that i would love for you to troll all day to add confusion to make them look over their shoulder to wonder out how do we know this how are we getting a picture access from his phone how are we able to do these things well we would like to have online trolls to stop trolling and obstructing us and to start obstructing the child traffickers, the drug smugglers, the ones that are getting the criminals, the fentanyl around, because we approach this and we separate the flock and we're separating this flock. In this segment of Border Wars, you guys got to see what the Child Watch Unit is doing. You have an opportunity to join a region. You have an opportunity to help Anthony get a bed, some clothes, maybe some toys. You have an opportunity to sponsor children and get them Bibles with their names engraved on them. You, know, you have an opportunity to do something to help a child. That's it. And, and to me, um, there's opportunities in your own neighborhood if these border children or the message that we have, it doesn't resonate with you. It comes from him. So I don't know how it could not resonate with you. It's pretty much simple. It's what Christ would have us do. Um, you know, we chase out the, the criminals with the bull whips, but we, we take care of the poor, the sick, the needy, the healthy, and we never deny him the kids. Um, so for those of you that, that will get involved, take initiative. We're looking for people who are going to stand up and take initiative. There are hundreds of children that we could use your assistance with in tracking and locating. We could use your assistance with in praying over. We could use your assistance with in sending clothing, material support, maybe going shopping and, and maybe pick them up and take them out and do a big brother, big sister. You know, especially if you're bilingual or maybe you have a friend who's bilingual. Well, that's good. It gives you an opportunity to spend more time with your friend that you talk to on Facebook every day that speaks Spanish. Well, why don't you get together with your friend? Why don't you get together and plan a trip? Maybe you got to travel 200 miles to go see a kid. Who cares? Why don't you get together with your Facebook friends or your whatever group, whatever they have out there? Get together with them and go and visit these children. We ask for believers and people who will do anything right by these families and children and not do anything to harm them. We ask you to step up and help them. We have faith that our Father will protect them and we will move in fiercely should anyone harass them, bother them. Uh, no, you leave them alone. They're kids. We don't care about anything other than doing God's work. And his work is for us to make sure these children can still pray to him, believe in him, worship him. And that's what they're going to be able to do. And it'll be American Christian patriots who stand that line, who hold that defense for them to serve and worship our God. And it's through some of these children, I believe a lot of our lost children are going to find our Lord and Savior again because these children aren't so badly polluted like we've allowed our own American children to be polluted. Now, we're going to end with that. I appreciate everybody, and we're going to close with prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your blessings. We thank you for the testimonies that's been received. We thank you for the opportunities that you provided us to step up onto your battlefield, to pick up your son's cross, and to do your work as you would have us do it. We are grateful. We are grateful for the spirit that moves this ministry, that guides this ministry, that separates those that are too weak for this ministry. We are grateful because it's through your spirit we're able to go out and do the work that you continue to do through us. We thank you in your son's precious name for everything that you do. Please continue to protect these children. Connect us with these children. You know our hearts, Father. You know we'll do right by them and we'll give all credit and glory to you as we've always done for it is through you that we achieve everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this collectively. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. I appreciate everything. We'll give you guys more updates. I'm going to stop recording now, but then I'm going to restart a live stream for a Q&A. So we'll restart, and then everyone can talk. We're going to stop this so this segment can be shared throughout social media. Thank you.